Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to another episode <clears throat> on my channel. <laughs> I hope you have been doing well. And I hope the changes in the season haven't brought about any sickness or allergies. Uh, for me, change of seasons usually brings some allergies, so I have to be careful and look out for different things and adjust a little bit. <clears throat> so today I'm going to be talking about vitamin D. So it's important as a large part of the Northern Hemisphere is going into winter, vitamin D becomes a very important topic. And I'm also continuing off the essential nutrient series that I'm busy with at the moment. So if you stick around till the end, you'll see how vitamin D functions, what it does, where we get it from, uh, what causes deficiencies and toxicity as well. <coughs> <coughs> oh, excuse me. So let's dive right in. So vitamin D Mostly we get it from sunlight, from sun exposure, and we need about 30 minutes of direct sunlight on your skin exposure every day. So 30 minutes is not a long time, that's about what you need to give you your, your vitamin D for, for the day, and your melanin, your melatonin, which also can become serotonin, which is the happy hormone in your brain to make you feel good and happy. So that's also uh, another one for vitamin D. <laughs> so in winter, lots of people get sad, seasonal, uh, seasonal affective disorder, which makes you feel depressed and unhappy and sad. <laughs> so it's because of the seasons, because there's a bit of less sunlight and people are lots, spend lots of time indoors, they don't go out. So remember, you need about 30 minutes of direct sunlight on your skin. Things that affect if your skin can get damaged or not is things that you drink or put on your skin or take before going outside. So if you're taking something like coffee, uh, it will stop your, your skin from making a protective layer. So stimulants, coffee, alcohol, smoking, they will stop your skin from making the protective layer when you go out in the sun. Sunglasses can stop that too because you are not getting the direct light that's signaling your skin to make the protective layer. So be careful of some of the things before you go out in the sun because then your skin can get damaged more easily. So it takes about two hours for your skin to repair or put back the layer after you've had something to drink or something to eat. If you've scrubbed your skin, it takes after a bath or a shower, it takes an hour or two for your skin to, to get back to the protective stage. So try and avoid direct sunlight after you've had a shower or a bath or scrubbed your face or put some kind of a cream or retinol or something on. Try not to go in the sun. So what happens <laughs> when you go out in the sun, the sunlight, the UV comes onto your skin and that is called 7D hydrocholesterol in your skin. Then it needs to change to become D3 or cholecalciferol in your blood. And then in your liver, it becomes 25 hydroxy cholecalciferol. So then when it gets to your liver, it can then be stored. It's also called calcifidiol, which is your storage form. So if you have an OL at the end form, then it's a storage form. So calcifidiol, your um, storage form. Calcitriol uh, is your active form, which can be made in your kidneys from 125-hydroxychlorocalciferol. So 125-hydroxychlorocalciferol needs an enzyme, 1-alpha-hydroxylase, to change it into the active form of calcitriol. So it's important that this enzyme is stimulated and it's stimulated by a decrease in your phosphorus or your phosphate level, your PO4, uh, three minus. So it needs to be stimulated to be active to make this change. So remember from the talk I had on amino acids that enzymes are formed from different things, fats, proteins. So you need all of these other things to make your enzymes, to make your in-between steps to complete all of the 
the changes in your body that needs to happen to make things active. So for vitamin D to be active, you need many enzymes, you need your pancreas to be making digestive enzymes, you need so many things to facilitate the change into an active form because you are eating either an animal form or a plant form of vitamin D. So uh, animal form usually comes in as, as D3, the cholecalciferol, the, the storage form, which then can go into your blood, but then that has to be changed in your liver and your kidneys. Your plant form, ergocalciferol, can hop into your, the liver, and from there it can go further. So the ergocalciferol needs an enzyme as well, 25 hydroxylase, to be changed into the active form. Whereas the animal part of vitamin D3 just needs to go through all the steps in your body. So the, the plant one can kind of skip a step or two. So they generally come from mushrooms, where the animal form comes from the stored form in the muscles and the fat and liver or organs. So <laughs> it, it, the ingestion, there's not many things that has a lot of vitamin D in nature in f a, a f edible form for us so the best way to get it is from the sun and like i said about 30 minutes exposure would be sufficient although you can have longer as well if you want more v more d3 stay a bit longer because your vitamin d is also essential for your immune function and for your re repairing function and for your calcium balance so your bones so <clears throat> The active form of calcitriol, the function that it has is to keep calcium in the blood as CA2+. Plus. <coughs> so every mineral, every element in your body has a charge, either a positive charge or a negative charge. And this is really important because it determines whether things can work and if they cannot work, the, the, the attraction. So it increases the calcium in the blood and it increases the phosphate in the blood, the PO4. And remember the PO4 stimulates the enzyme to make your active form in your kidneys. So if you have a decrease in calcium, the, parathi the parathyroid gland is stimulated to make PTH, a parathyroid hormone. And then PTH triggers the alpha hydroxylase. So the alpha hydroxylase is the enzyme you need in your kidneys to make or produce the active form of vitamin D. So if you have a vitamin D test, they can either test for this alpha hydroxylase or they can test for the 25 hydroxycholacalciferol. So they'll first test for the hydroxycholacalciferol to see if you have vitamin D in your blood and then, or in your liver as well, then they will check further if there is a, a problem. So there are many different parts where your vitamin D pathway can be disrupted. So in your liver, in your kidneys, in your blood. So there are many different steps that can be checked to see if your vitamin D is sufficient and if your body can make it and can trans, trans uh, change it, <laughs> transfer it from one organ to another and then make it into your active form. So calcitriol, increases calcium and not potassium phosphate the um, phosphate po43 minus it increases the absorption in your gut in your git so if you have sufficient vitamin d then you are, are absorbing more calcium and you are absorbing more phosphate which is essential for your bones for your teeth for your healthy growth calcium is also used in your muscles and phosphate is also used for your ATP your energy molecule so they are essential in different parts of your body then it also increases the reabsorption of calcium and phosphate from your kidneys so it's increasing these levels throughout your body and it also increases your osteoclast activity to release calcium and phosphate from your bones so it's releasing them from your bones and they're putting them back into your bones. So it's a resorption and a resorption. So, so CA, calcium and phosphate, PO4, they bind together and mineralize into the bone. 
So you need calcium and you need phosphate. You can't have one and not the other. You can't have calcium and no phosphate. That will not work. You need both of them to make strong, healthy bones. So where they are in the blood, they can bind and they can deposit into the bone. So that's why they, the osteoclast activity releases them from the bones into the blood so that they can bring them back. So it's a, a circle of bone health. <laughs> so you want to stimulate this activity. You want to stimulate the calcium and the phos phosphate to be together. Okay. So if you have low vitamin D, you have an increase in parathyroid hormone, you have an increase in calcium and phosphate, and that gets lost in your urine which means your blood, your um, bone is breaking down. It doesn't have the ability to bind together. So the calcium and the phosphate need vitamin D to bind together, to go into your bones. So bones is being bone is being broken down. There's more cartilage and there's less mineralized bone. So this is a problem because cartilage is harder, um, softer, like in your nose, and it's more bendy. <laughs> So what that causes in children is rickets, so brittle, bendy bones, and in older people, osteomalacia, which is brittle bones. So when your bone gets broken down and you don't have enough bone, so that is very dangerous. So how much vitamin D do we need? So for children, 400 international units if you're under one year. From one year to 70, you need 600 international units per day. And over 70s, they need more than 800 international units a day. If you get 30 minutes to an hour of sunlight a day, that should be sufficient if your body is able to mineralize and to <coughs> use that vitamin D or the form that it gets into your skin, the seven dehydrocholesterol that needs to be changed into the calcitriol. So your kidneys, your liver, your skin, your blood, they all need to work together to make the active form that you can actually use. So 50% of the world's population is deficient in vitamin D. Don't get enough vitamin D, don't get sunlight, uh, or it gets lost. The body cannot change it, cannot use it, cannot do it. So deficiencies are caused by not enough exposure to UV light, low fat absorption. Uh, vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin. It needs intestinal fat to be absorbed as well. So in your intestines, so the bile, the liver, the intestinal tract, they need to work together because you need some fat to absorb it. And if you don't get enough from your diet, so mushrooms are very high in vitamin D. So mushrooms are a fantastic food to consume, to eat. Toxicity is usually linked to supplementation. It's not, it's extremely rare that someone will get vitamin D toxicity just from exposure to the sun. It's only through supplementation. So you get different symptoms, so stones, bones, abdominal groans, and abdominal moans and psychic groans. So stones, you get kidney stones because there's more calcium in your blood and that goes to your kidneys to be filtered and calcium is a, a bigger molecule so that it can build up in your kidneys and cause kidney stones, so calcium kidney stones. In your bones, it can cause osteomalacia because you, you're not binding calcium and phosphate together. They are separate and they're floating around and you're losing them in your urine. Then abdominal moans, you have cramps. You have contraction of your smooth muscle because you have too much calcium in the blood, so it causes um, the rhythm to be out and you cause moans, so abdominal cramps. And then psychic groans, your brain, your blocks, neural firing. Your neural firing is being blocked and you get nervous system, your nervous system function is decreased, so you get some mental instability, depression as well. So that's the story of vitamin D. Uh, to make it short and easy, 30, 30 minutes to an hour of sunlight. Do not exclude anything from your diet. You need carbohydrates, you need protein, you need fats. You need fat to absorb your fat soluble vitamins, A, D, E, and K. Those are essential, essential vitamins. You need them, so you need fat. Fat you get in different forms. Um, the good forms are mostly the plant-based forms. The ones that your body struggles with are the animal-based ones. 
Uh, as I mentioned in a previous video as well, fat can bypass your liver and go straight into your bloodstream. That is why the animal fats can be harmful because they go into your bloodstream and then they can cause havoc and cause problems there. But you need fat, okay? So especially for vitamin D to make vitamin D active, you need fats. And remember in mushrooms and in things that have been fortified, foods that have been fortified with vitamin D will also give you some of the vitamin D that you need. So I hope this has helped. I hope it has been insightful that you've gotten some value from it. As always, stay healthy and to God be the glory.